Well, Frank, you asked for a reaction after Boxing Day. Did you get it? Yeah, I did definitely in performance. Started really well. Uh, Villa had some moments, but dealt with them in the first half and came through the first half really strong, get a goal that we deserved. Um, second half, conceded when we got a man on the floor. That's kind of the run we're in at the minute. And, um, and then we pushed. We pushed and we couldn't find... Uh, the de like, couldn't break the deadlock in the end to get the win, but attitude-wise, effort-wise, some of the play was really good against a good team. Have you seen that challenge in the build-up to their goal? Uh, no, I haven't really seen it. No, I, I saw the what I felt was a handball near us before that, which was just next to the linesman. They didn't give it. I uh, haven't seen the challenge. Fair enough. Um, in the early part of the game, did you think that you potentially could have been out of sight? Christian Pulisic had a, a number of chances. Yeah, Christian was really bright all game, which is great for him to play two games in that space of time, fitness-wise. He was really bright, hits the side net and it looks like he's in. Created a few chances for himself. And as I say, a lot of our play was really good. Full, quite a few corners. Again, later on in the game, we came strong, we get chance. Chile nearly scores an incredible goal and Timo has a chance. So, yeah, lots of things. And when you're in a bit of a tough moment, sometimes things don't quite go for you. A month ago, probably we win that game. Things go for you with a little bit of belief. Now it's a tough little moment. So. Uh, you have to fight through it, but I thought everything... I can't ask more from what the players gave, the way they worked it. You wanted competition between Oli and Tammy, and Oli comes up with a goal and gives you more selection problems. Yeah, he, he does, and it was great for him to get that. He gets on the end of things in the box, and we, we have to deliver for him, and, and we did with a great build-up to that goal as well. So, uh, yeah, a, a positive from Oli uh, tonight. Again, just disappointed. I think, as I say, all the players, nobody let me down tonight. Everyone worked after playing two days ago and what was a tough match for us. Um, yeah, actually, it was great. We just didn't quite get the, the, the rubber to green in a way. Well, Frank clearly said that he got the reaction from his players tonight that he wanted, but perhaps this is a little bit more worrying. Wider concerns for Chelsea in that the only win that they've registered this season against a team in the top half of the table is against West Ham. If you're Frank Lampard and you're looking at those results, are you worried? It's not Frank who's got to look at it and be worried. It's uh, Roman Abramovich and the hierarchy. They'll be looking at that. Then. They won't go by their eyes. They wouldn't know all about that. And West Ham game, I thought they were very lucky. I said it before the, before the game. I thought they were very lucky to get that 3-0 victory at home at West Ham. Um, yeah, it's very worrying. They need to beat the top teams. They need to finish in the top four. They need to challenge, even more so, for the Premier League. If they do not challenge for the Premier League, then he ain't done his job right. That would what, what they're saying. Roman Abramovich just saying you spent over £200 million on such a strike force. Yes, they, we know they need time to settle, but you know the hierarchy there won't feel like that. They will say if he doesn't finish in the top four, he will not have a job. Simple as that. They've got the manager in Frank Lampard, a legend of the club. They've got the, the players, as Tim just said, 200 million plus spent. So what's missing, Rob? You need your players to be on form. You get your best players out onto a pitch. You set them up against one of the top teams who they can't beat at the moment, but you need them all to be playing well. And you, you talk about, you know, we sit here and we, we will pull out, pull out key points in, in a game, but it's the guys on form who turn up at those key points. And at the moment, for Chelsea, those guys aren't doing it. Mm, I think as well, you look at the, um, like the back four, again, was, was, ch was changed today. Well, the centre-half pairing was changed. That, that doesn't help. Um, you, and I, I agree with Rob. I think that you do need to be in some kind of confident form, you know, to blast through a, a period where it's not quite going for you. Frank, the way Frank's speaking there, he's, he's almost talking like they're not getting the rubber to green. Um, I, I think that when he watches um, his centre-half again, he might change his mind on that, simply because I feel that his centre-half wasn't injured, so get up, and the attitude should be, let me get up and get back into my position quickly. May have stopped um, a goal, but you, you do feel like something's not quite gelling properly, you know, from back to front. Um, and maybe if he can get his a team out that he can roll out on a, on a weekly basis, depending on rotation, obviously, he might be able to get some momentum and some confidence and then they can move from there. I just wonder, as a, as a player, when you're a part of a team that is constantly changing because Frank is in search of his best 11, is that quite disrupting, though, as well? Because there's no consistency. I think um, for forwards, it's not so, so bad because you're just getting on with it, hopefully getting chances and taking them, but... I think when you're starting to move around the centre-half pairing, which has got a kind of like a, you know, you've got to have the goalkeeper, all three of you got to be in tune. Midfielders as well, you don't really want to be moving, moving them about too much because you want people to know exactly what they're doing in the role in the team. But I think you can move the forwards about, but you don't want to mess around with that too much because that's the stability. 
forwards can just get on with nicking goals. But I think that if you can get that, it's, it's half the battle. I think on another level, you look at it, and as a player... You, you, as a manager, sorry, looking at the players, you know you can't keep everyone happy in the dressing room. But at the minute, you, you're not keeping anyone happy because you're just changing them all and, and pulling them out and put them, put, putting them in, pulling them out, ch ch chopping it and changing it. And eventually, you end up with a whole squad where no one's absolutely completely content apart from Mendy who's playing every game. Not an easy place to be, a manager, in a dressing room like Chelsea. No, and he's having a real difficult period. I would suggest this is the toughest period of Frank Lampard's management career. You know, you can tell he keeps looking at the big screen, seeing his face on it, knows he's under pressure. When you feel that camera on you, you know the highlight is on you. Because he should be under pressure because he spent the money. When you spend money, unfortunately, as a manager, heaps the pressure on you. But he's not getting the best out of the individuals. Yes, the, the individuals are not, but you're quite right. When you play with some rhythm and you're playing with the same guys all of the time, you pretty much know each other's movements, you know each other's games. You know, even the right back, the guy know the right winger's game. You know, he comes off the line, I'm going to go around the outside. The back five is almost can pick itself, I, I believe. I think it's Thiago Silva, I think it's Zuma, it's Chilwell and James. OK, James is missing today, so you're forced to make a change. You can bring Aspilicueta in, no problem. But the rest in front has to be similar. You know, at that moment, it's like a pick and mix. It's all it's like, who's going to start for Chelsea? We could not pick Chelsea's side today. It was impossible. And next time when they play Man City, which is another tough game, they have had a disastrous Christmas period. One point looks like. If they don't beat, if they don't beat Man City, one point out of three games, not good enough. And actually, if you look back, they went on that 17-match unbeaten <coughs> run in all competitions, and we were all waxing lyrical about them because mm -hmm. he has the talent, there's no doubt... About that. So we look back, they went on that 17 match unbeaten <coughs> run in all competitions and we were all waxing lyrical about them because mm -hmm. he has the talent, there's no doubt about that. So why did it change? What was the turning point, do you think? I think with the defence, like right, he said, mm -hmm. it, it, you, you have that understanding and then and you change it. And you talk about the continuity, as Tim says, and you, the understandings of players. We saw in the, in the tunnel just before the game, Oli Giroud and Ben Chilwell having a chat in the tunnel. And you know exactly what they're talking about. Oli Giroud's telling him where to put that ball. Yeah. They don't even need that conversation. They know. We saw the goals that he scored this season. They know where he wants to be. And that understanding for defenders, for a goalkeeper, is critical. And I think you look at the games against Manchester United, against Tottenham, nil-nil draws. Mm -hmm. They needed the defence then. They went conservative. They went on a safety approach, thinking we can get a goal. That's eluded them in those games. But since then, I think that that form, that consistency has sort of avoided them. And then you look at it as well, even, uh, you have to say, uh, early... It, Early on in the, in the first half, there, there was a good chance. I think that they do change games. Goals change yeah. games. And I think that Christian Pulisic had a really good chance where he, he, missed, the, he missed the goal on the, on the right side. He missed one on the, on the left-hand side where he missed the goal. Those things, if you get that kind of luck, all of a sudden you get those goals. We have seen people come back on Chelsea, but it gives you a little bit of confidence mm. in the way you're playing. You do then try to pass it through that gap and you do try to express yourself a little bit more. But when it's not going for you like that, it seems it's very difficult to continue to try and do that. Well, so many of the players from this uh, Aston Villa side have impressed this season. John McGinn, one of them. And Dean Smith has a lot to be pleased with. Absolutely. I think the chalk and cheese from the team we saw last season, they've really improved. They've done brilliant in the transfer market. I think right from the back, the goalkeeper Martinez is a massive step up from what they had before. Matty Cash, who delivers a fantastic cross today, he's up and down the right-hand side all of the time. I think McGinn has come, he's really settled to the Premier League now. I think after he got that injury, he come back, he looked a little bit heavy. Looks like he's got himself back really fit now. They talk in there, ask him about does he want to rest. Of course he doesn't want to rest. He wants to play every single football match because if you go out of this side, you might not get back in it. Ross Barkley might find it difficult to get back in it. He's done brilliantly when he first came, picked up an injury. He's sitting on the sidelines for a while now. When he's fit, he's not guaranteed to get straight back in this side. The rest of them have done so well. And it's incredible to think that what they stayed up just by a point last season. They are now flying this campaign. Do you put that just down to recruitment or is there a lot more to it? Uh, mentality as well. I think there's been a real shift within the club, within everyone. And, and also the noises from away from the, from the actual pitch, from the training ground, you know, behind the scenes. It seemed that there was, it was always Dean Smith was under threat. It was a club that was in cri potentially in crisis at any moment. Now it's just positive noises all the time coming out of the club. And you see that on the pitch. Everyone looks settled. Everyone looks happy. They play with smiles on their faces. Yeah, I was just going to say that. We were watching at one point and we said, you know, they look like they're really enjoying their football. And they certainly would have enjoyed El Ghazi scoring another goal. Five and five for him now, right? Yeah, he's doing well. He's come under a little bit of stick 
from the Villa fans recently because he wasn't doing so well. He wasn't assisting, he weren't scoring, but talking about a young, fit side that have got a lot of belief in what happened to him last season. And now they're coming up against teams that they know that they can beat. I'm very disappointed here with Christensen because we see Jack Grealish get up here um, and it's not a knock that it's going to make him have to leave the game. I think I, want, I don't want to see my centre-half lying on the floor like that when you know you're not, nothing's wrong with you. And you can see all the problems this calls. You see Kante should have got back quicker. Maybe Aspilla Quetta could have been a little bit more aware, but he's worried about Jack Grealish. And in the end, they scored a goal. They deservedly scored a goal. But uh, my problem with this is, is that I, he, he gets up and he plays on. So I believe if Jack Grealish can get up and play on, he should get up and play on as well. Then you look at Jack Grealish, he kind of occupies Aspilla Quetta and it's Kante. Now we're talking about one of the best defensive midfielders in the world and his awareness of where our Ghazi was and the awareness that the other centre half wasn't in there was was baffled me that he didn't he, he didn't recognise that situation, Kante. Jorginho actually did really well to drop in, recognised yeah. it himself, and they got the three, which as a goalkeeper or as a defender, you want those three players to defend the, the goal itself. But they got the overload, and Angolo wasn't there to recognise that, and that's that momentary lapse in concentration cost them. Could the keeper have done any better there? They're, they're horrible. You can't go around with pogo tough. legs, you know, pogo <laughs> stick legs in the goal. So Not ones you, you want to watch You've back. got to open them at some point and it's just a horrible feeling for him. He gets uh, he makes a save and you, it's that close, you're just hoping it hits you. And unfortunately for him, it, it does hit him, but just not enough, straight oh. between the knees. But overall, Villa with the one point and fifth in the table. I mean, that's incredible for this stage Incredible of the season. And, and a couple of games and hands on Chelsea as well. I mean... I think when you look at Villa, when I, when I see their team sheet come out, I can pretty much guess, one, apart from one or two players, it's a settled team. It's a complete contrast to Chelsea. You don't know who's going to play. I mean, he's tried to mix it up at the back there, no Silva, no, no Zuma today, and it's cost him. Because Christensen, that is not good enough. I'll be saying to Christensen after the game, why was you lying on the floor? Why did you not get up and prevent that goal from being scored? You wasn't hurt. What are you laying down there for, trying to feign injury to come off? You've cost us the game today. You've cost us three points. Yes, Villa pushed on and they deservedly got their, their point. But that is crucial, getting a goal. That's not good enough. You're a big, strong centre-back. Don't lay down the floor like a baby. Get up and get on with it for your team. Not good enough. OK, well, let's talk about going forward. And both teams had opportunities to score some great goals, actually. I mean, McGinn, a good example. He hit the bar, didn't he? Yeah, it was a brilliant strike. And he had a really, really good game, um, John McGinn. And, and like Tim said earlier, you know, he, he, he lost, lost out a lot in last season because of injury. And they were desperate for him to come back. But he said he's not had many shots in the last 10 games. But this was brilliant. You can see what happens with a goalkeeper. He, he's beaten all ends up there. Um, he's just caught it, literally, he's caught it too well almost. Perfect judgment, right? What are you talking about? It's a great judgment from the keeper. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't, don't get in the way and complicate <laughs> things. Let it hit the bar. Yeah. He was beaten, yeah. <laughs> but he, he has a history of that, John McGinn, scoring great goals from great distance. And that left foot, he's got a wonderful technique mm -hmm. on it and nearly paid off. Ben Chilwell also had a great chance. Yeah, Beautiful. this was pure. I mean, it was a good pick so out from, from Hudson Adoy. He just picks him out. It's a good ball. He gets his head up and he sees Ben just got his arm up there at the far post. Just wants it. They back off, they leave it to him and he strikes that perfectly. Oh. And it's just not enough bend. If he's another yard or two out, that would have bent in the corner. You know, it was bending around all the time. Looks like it just flicked off. I think was, Matty Cash was very lucky it didn't him on the hands as well because when he goes in to block him, his hands are up here. So it's on two, two folds there, very lucky there to get away with that Aston Villa.